Hi, I'm Christy Turnquist, TV critic with The Oregonian and OregonLive.com. I am here today with Mary McDonald Lewis, who viewers of Grimm probably will not recognize <laughs> as Frau Pesch, the rather scary hexen beast Vessen, who showed up in episodes on season two and season three. And one of the, one of the notable things about Frau Pesch is she had the indignity of suffering what may be the most protracted death of any Grimm character so far. Yeah. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. <laughs> um, you know, we, we saw terrible things being done to the late Frau Pesch yes. as part of Adeline's, you know, efforts to try to get her powers back as a Vessen. Now, what, what all was that like? What did you have to go through? How did all that happen? Right. Well, you know, Christy, um, any actor who works on any show, especially if they have a number of episodes, as I did as Frau Pech, I had four episodes and then the fifth, her death, her untimely death. Uh, any actor always wonders, you know, am I going to live? How long am I going to be on the show? And am I going to come back? And I think poor Frau Pech's death really answered that question for all of us. <laughs> And yeah, she's gone. She's gone. <laughs> she stick a fork in her. She is done. You know, Adeline had to perform this really extended ritual over Frau Pech's body, and she had to disembowel her and, you know, sort of make tea of her innards, and it was just terrible. Uh, guided by the wonderful actress Shohara Agdashlu in the role of the gypsy. Yes. And so, thank God for the union. They actually couldn't do to me what they did to Frau Pech. So at that point, I had to go down to Los Angeles and go to a model making shop just a few blocks from Burbank Airport and had a, a full body cast made of me, starting from the head. They did the head, kind of head and shoulders first, and then they did the torso and then the feet and hands. The whole thing took all day, mm. and it was an incredibly long and horrifying process. I was scared to death. It sounds very claustrophobic. It was incredibly claustrophobic. Um, there are pictures of, of one of my hands, and it is, was truly a white knuckle experience as I'm holding the hand of one of the model makers who's slathering the latex and the plaster on me. But they got a really believable, gory model, and I didn't have to actually be disemboweled. So that was awesome. Yes, that is awesome. Yeah, I, I think we're all happy about that. <laughs> you know, one of the other things I wanted to ask you about, and, and this, this, I'm reminded of this, by the way, that you are pronouncing her name, Frau Pech. 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 Yeah, Frau Pech. <laughs> That's yeah. wonderful. Now, what, one of your other responsibilities on Grimm is you are the dialect coach, although I believe that you refer to it with a, with a different uh, I name. call it language wrangler <laughs> because it's, it's a little bit more than dialect coaching in the case of Grimm. Well, and, you know, anybody who watches the show knows that uh, the characters, including Monroe, the, mm -hmm. the Vessen played by Silas Weir Mitchell, every week is rattling off these multisyllabic yes. German names yes. that just would trip anybody up. And then there's always, you know, bad guys coming over from overseas who all have different accents. Right. What, <laughs> what is it like um, trying to train everybody? You know, it is an interesting process. And the way that we handle dialect and language on Grimm is different from any other show in the world because we are so multinational and because we also have a fanciful language, as I describe it, Grimmish, which I also name. I like that. And so it's my job to monitor the Grimmish to make sure that from the point of view of semantics, it's correct. When we have uh, a return to certain words, that we remember what we did with them the first time, mm -hmm. that formal and informal tenses are established such that whenever any character comes in and speaks German to the captain, as an example, I'm the one who keeps the records as to whether he uses the formal or informal German, as an example. And so it's, it's a complex and marvelous, marvelous job for me as a dialect coach. I think it lends so much texture to, to Grimm, and all the guys on the show, all the leads, are really committed to doing their homework when it comes to the languages. It is very impressive because people seem to just, you know, very easily rattle these things off. So they do. clearly, clearly it's working. Yeah. Um, so we look forward to seeing the new season, season four of Grimm, which is coming up on NBC on yes. October 24th. That's right. Um, and as all of us here in Portland know, Grimm is set and filmed in Portland, so we're especially looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Christy Turnquist for The Oregonian and OregonLive.com, and thanks for <laughs> being here. Thank you so much, Christy.